they've, they've got this app they make you um... hello and welcome to asian paints india designs google hangout session we have with us today jürgen meyer architect and artist from Germany, and Paul Foxech, industrial designer from the UK. Hello. Hello. It's the first time we've met. <laughs> yeah, Google makes it possible. <laughs> Google made it possible. Okay, so we're going to talk about gadget gizmos and anything under the sun that's electronic. And, okay, so it's a fun session. So, um, at the moment, what are the gadgets that you have on you? In our jackets? Yeah. I have my iPhone. I bet, I bet you have an iPhone. No, I have a Blackberry today with me. And I have this contact lenses that are connected to the internet too. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're not. No, they're you know. not. <laughs> I'm from You're Germany. Good. They're not. <laughs> I'm from Germany. We have them there. <laughs> really? No, sit down. I can't make it. He's kidding. He's, 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 you can see through the yeah. walls. <laughs> so what do you have on you? I have my phone. It's an yeah. old Samsung phone. Why do, you, why do you have a black? Well, if I travel outside of Germany, mm -hmm. um, it's easier to get my emails with the push forward. With iPhone, I usually have to be on a Wi-Fi zone. So I actually have to be constant connected with mm -hmm. my contact lenses and everything. <laughs> I need a BlackBerry. It's not good. It might change in the near future, but I have both. But I have more like iPhone before Wi-Fi zones at home. So you have two phones? Yeah. You have one phone now? One phone. One yeah. phone. And, uh, like four apps that you have on your phone that you just absolutely cannot do without. Do you have, you have apps? I sometimes have one. <laughs> I delete them once in a while, but I have a really great public transportation app. Mm -hmm. um, and we have a great system of public transportation in Berlin. So it really tells you where you go, um, which kind of connections you use. Mm -hmm. It's fantastic. There's a great app, I don't found it. It's, um, it's a heart, it, it measures your heartbeat. Really? Have you seen this? At the sleep cycle? No, no. You. you you push, you put your finger here like this, mm -hmm. and then you connect, and it will monitor and tell you how many beats per second. So when do you need it? Now. <laughs> <laughs> how, how cool is that? You that need your herbal really tea. Cool. You need your herbal tea right now. Herbal tea. Where's my tea? <laughs> you know, the, my best app actually was one of the first apps, with Shazam. Mm -hmm. Shazam. Oh it's, yeah. It's yeah. like perfect. You really need the music. Yeah. You know, it's just wonderful. Such, yeah. a, such a simple app as well. And you have this tune stuck in your head. I never heard this before. Yeah, and then yeah. Shazam it. Easy. Yeah. So, um, we know both your work is tech driven. So, um, how far does your love for things futuristic go? Are you a science freak? Are you a sci fi fan, maybe? I think it's curiosity that constantly kind of makes you drive and understand how certain developments echoes in you know in your everyday life. Mm -hmm. So if something is kind of on the horizon, I start to think like what would be the effect at some point, near future, mm -hmm. larger, you know, far away future, and how it becomes kind of relevant for the built environment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I I do love technology. Yeah, yeah. yeah because it's yeah, it's very seductive. You see something, you're like, wow, man, that's, how's it work? How can I use it? You know, I'm, I'm very aware of it as well. When I see new things that people are so excited about, I always try to question it because mm -hmm. I think there is a, there's a danger in just kind of jumping on or just consuming the latest the latest thing. So well, it's successful when it comes kind of as a challenge. At the same time, also it brings certain comfort. You know, technology only kind of survives if it gives you a certain level of comfort or like easiness. Um, if it makes things easier. Uh, at the same time, of course, you know, we have to like learn how to use these things, how to actually make them part of our everyday communication. Yeah. So you're kind of reprogramming yourself at the same time, right? To be a little you comfortable. Have to update, yeah, yeah. To have constant updates. Yeah. And um, on your ultimate tech wish list, what's that one gadget? I usually have problems when I travel that I need to bring a couple of shoes with me and they take up so much space. So if I can have a shoe that transforms from a sneaker into a nice kind of, you know, elegant mm -hmm. shoe to a boots, that would be perfect. Oh, oh that's a good business idea, I think. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, juicing is, mm -hmm. is so important to me. Mm -hmm. And it's like, if I miss a day, I start to feel run down. So when I travel, especially even this week, I haven't juiced. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, juices are big and they, Power. So yeah. maybe I could do like a, a portable, portable juicer. juicer. You know, this could be interesting because I mean, I bought my dad a juicer. Mm -hmm. You know, and he's he's at the age where he's kind of sixty. But what kind of thing there? What does he put in there? 
No, 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 you didn't put it in. Oh yeah, it's just fruits. Don't go too crazy on oranges or apples. Just keep it simple. Um, carrots, ginger, Leaf. spinach. Yeah. And that's that's okay. And um, they can feed you pretty at some point. Yeah, exactly. But I mean, yeah, it's kind of yeah. That's what I'll do. Portable <laughs> juicer. Portable juicer. Yes. That's what we can do that together. Yeah. <laughs> See, making things happen in their design. <laughs> So, uh, when you're conceptualizing, are you all an AutoCAD computer person or do you resort to the pen and paper the old fashioned way? I think it's a very limited question somehow because it all goes hand in hand. It's such mm -hmm. a messy process to design something. And I think that 3D stuff or new technology is only one more tool to use, mm -hmm. but it doesn't replace really, you know, the hands on part because you learn a lot by actually doing it. If you draw it or if you build something, you have to make decisions. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, in a 3D modeling as well, but it's a longer process and it's actually more immediate sometimes mm -hmm. if you just do it with your hands. But it goes back and forth, like it's somehow fusing all the different technologies. But is it difficult to keep up with the softwares that are coming in? And because you have to learn, relearn over and over again. So is but it, you is don't, it? you know, don't expect from one person to know all these things. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why you have a group of people, mm -hmm. and they all come in with their specialties and mm -hmm. their own kind of vision and input. Um, and they, different people see different ways to move it. Um, mm -hmm. So I think new technologies also has the beauty of combining, like combining more people to work on one project. Sure. Um, I mean, ideas start in your in your in your head, mm -hmm. and I think then it's about how you how you begin to express that. So talking with your team is is always a, a maybe a starting point. And what I find, I'm not sure if you find it, as soon as you you know the idea is here, you start to draw it or you go onto computer and actually it it, it loses something. And actually in your mind it's actually really quite quite a wonderful thing. So finding the right way to start that process is so important because otherwise, you know, an idea can get lost. So, you know, paper is it's usually my friend initially, and then computers. But the, the brain is like it's, it's, it's always it always looks the best mm -hmm. here. <laughs> and uh, the one gizmo that has drastically changed the way you live. Yeah. I can't really remember. No. But you know they come so silently somehow they sneak into your life. <laughs> you don't really know when they really started to change your mm -hmm. your life. So. Maybe Paul answers first if I might have I mean, an idea. I know this sounds so, so, such a silly thing to say, but it's my bicycle. Because, and, and I know that it's, it's not a new thing. And you know, in London, you buy a bicycle, it gets stolen, and you see it in the market. It's the way it is. So you, no one buys amazing bikes. You know, it's just kind of a, a very fluid thing. You pick a bike in the market. So you know, I, I used to drive. And why was I driving in London? It's just such a silly thing. And then I bought this bike for the market. And, completely changed everything. So it's kind of, sometimes it doesn't need to be the latest thing. Actually, it's the things that have been around for so many years can make such a big, such a big impact. So yeah, it's my bike. It keeps me healthy. It's quicker than using public transport. Yeah. And it's free, which is great. <laughs> Maybe I think for me it was a school. And then I went to Cooper Union. I think this was really eye-opening and life-changing in a certain way. The way I looked into how architecture is produced, how to have to make your own argument, how to find your own voice uh, in producing something. So, I mean, that's kind of also a machine, you know, a school, somehow a machine with a lot of intelligent people kind of bringing together a certain mechanism of thinking process. Mm -hmm. So, I would kind of add that to my experience being in school. Yeah. And we have a bunch of questions coming in from Twitter. And uh, someone wants to know the one gadget you wish you could give an overall to, like something that's really not nicely designed that you want to just change all over. Start from scratch. Uh, I don't know. I think the car needs to be reinvented somehow. Mm -hmm. uh, we understand the car still has something that drives, but now we know that cars take pictures, you mm -hmm. know, and they blur also, you know, pictures again. We know that cars can become kind of communication vehicles. Mm -hmm. I think they can become much more intelligent. Car ownership will be replaced by maybe buying into just 
getting a driving, you know, mechanism, a driving piece, you know, for a moment. So the way how we use uh, individual mobility, I think, will be reinvented. And the car, I know people understand how that works right now, but I think it doesn't show really in the pro in the product, the car itself at this mm -hmm. point. So I think there will be a lot of changes happening. Um, I think I would try to tackle the air conditioning unit. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, it, it has such a, there's so many things wrong with it. You know, mm -hmm. one, one of the things that architecturally you have these brought these machine blocks, I'm not sure what they actually do, but they were, they're were stuck on the side of buildings, which are very, very ugly. They consume too much too much energy, and they're, and they're quite, they're in, they're even in this roof, they just, they're, they just, they appear. Yeah. So I think everything needs to be rethought about it, and also just trying to understand why we are so addicted to being in these perfectly controlled temperatures. So, yeah, I think someone's got to do that, and I've got some ideas about how that can be done, but it's such an interesting area. Do you have a problem with air conditioning in London? Because in Berlin, we don't have that many air conditioning systems. Yeah. And I mean, the climate, we're kind of fortunate, the climate is still quite balanced. Mm -hmm. And somewhere you, you know, might have like a couple of weeks that's a little hot. But yeah, yeah. I think heating is more of an issue. Yeah, Here, yeah. of course, air conditioning is more important. Right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But yeah, I'm, maybe not so much in the UK. But New York, yeah. New York. That's kind of a cluster of air conditioning. But people are obsessed, they're obsessed about you know, yeah, the no, whole yeah. building at the perfect temperature. I mean, we, you know, humans are, you know, we are adaptable, we can actually cope. Mm -hmm. And, and the, the, the most worrying thing is that they consume so much energy, and that's the worrying thing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, it's an interesting area. But and even just on a very superficial level, you, know, like you can just make them more beautiful, just the way that they look. But that's the boring bit. The, the more interesting bit is to actually try to change people's perception about why they're they're choosing to you know, have thousands of these, these units in every single mm -hmm. building. You know. but, you know, big, big deal. Mm -hmm. So, are there any trends that you are that you've seen in uh, the gadget design industry globally? Are there any, any sort of you know similar trends or something that's coming up? But the boring part, I think, is that. Beauty is still like exists as something, you know, you even said like it has to be more beautiful. Beauty seems to be like a category that's at this point is very limited in its definition. Mm -hmm. You know, it goes somehow back to brown design, like all these kind of beautiful radios um, and uh, clocks you know, from the 70s that were designed um, by Dieter Rams uh, for brown. And, you know, you see it now in Apple products and you see it kind of being echoed in other appliances or other machines and I think that's somehow unfortunate that there seems to be only one agreement right now in the design world mm -hmm. what is kind of beautiful and by design for these kind of new technologies. I'm hoping that it opens up again and we find different ways of you know dealing with our kind of built and design world. I think you know when, when I think about you know there's always this big these grand ideas about technology being integrated into our body or wearable technologies and I think you know of course there's the potential of that being pretty fantastic you know, that you can kind of see digital data images movies you can record the world but I'm, I'm also quite nervous about it in the sense that they, they promote it as though you can see see more but actually I think there's a there's a you may see less because it's difficult enough to be a human in terms of just reading people's body languages and, you know this, it's a beautiful place, and I'm, I think now that there's a suggestion that technology will kind of be in us, yeah. you know, I think. So the tendency is actually to become invisible somehow, no? It's part <laughs> of your body. My yeah. contact lens is already there. Exactly. But your glasses you know, might be old fashioned at this point, you know, with your glasses. With, you know, maybe you have some kind of technology in your ears as well. Do you, do you, would you like that? Would you actually like to have a battery inside you? No, no, it, it's too creepy. Or a microchip. I mean, we, I think we're a long way for that. You know? No, but the, the Google Glasses? The Google Glasses. That's, that's pretty close, and you can record and you can see it here. Yeah, no, but so I'm, what I mean is that we're, we're, we're a long way for it being successful, well, yeah. accepted. Accepted. Because I think my living nightmare would be to walk down a street and see adverts mm -hmm. pop up saying two for one over there and you could, I mean and this is what this is this will this will you know maybe you can turn it off but I mean this is this is I would rather just you know go back to being completely old-fashioned um, but yeah it's a, it's an amazing thing and I think it can help 
you know, you can imagine a doctor using it to remotely mm -hmm. diagnose a patient. Mm -hmm. Fantastic, you know, 10 out of 10, but if it's in the wrong hands and it becomes too commercial, I mean. So maybe the most important advice or gadget to invent is the on-off button. You know, when you can actually really connect yeah, to that. For sure. Definitely, for sure. yeah. But I think the, 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 the key is <coughs> energy. I think solar panel, that's, that, that needs to be really, you know, the batteries in technology are so, uh, firstly, they're very toxic. Um, and so if we can just use the sun to kind of help us power all of these things, this is this would be fantastic. Mm -hmm. That will happen. More to the questions? No. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Right. Right, that thank easy. you so much, Jürgen and Paul. It was lovely speaking to you. Thank and you. thank you for joining us. Sure, thank you. Yeah. Yes. Great. Yeah. Yeah.